Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam wa rasulullah. Welcome to We Are All Okay Wednesday. Today's topic, we're up to the letter K, so it's breaking free from the killjoy cycle. And at times in life when things seem quite challenging, we can be quite the killjoy um, around us. Or we may experience people who are like that in our life as well. But really today we're focusing on when we get into that mode ourselves and how do we break free from it, inshallah. So I didn't find anything specifically in the Quran that talks specifically to the concept of killjoy. <laughs> However, I do think this verse is quite relevant to the answer to it, which is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, surely with difficulty there is ease. And one of the things that is very beautiful about having this understanding um, and, and becoming you know, deeper in this understanding is experiencing the difficulties with ease. So often we interpret that that, the the ease is coming after the difficulty but what we've experienced is the ease with the difficulty meaning that yes there are tests and challenges and struggles and yes we have feelings around it um difficult times around it but inside there's still an ease that that ease isn't um unsettled you know by what's happening subhanallah and you know as they say in a, a true believer wishes for their brothers and sisters what they wish for themselves it's certainly something i truly wish for my brothers and sisters in islam to experience this because it is quite beautiful to experience peaceful grief to experience peaceful anger even is really quite possible alhamdulillah so I like to start each session with a self-reflection and getting you to kind of notice around the topic because then, inshallah, as I unpack it, you will focus inwardly on yourself rather than externally on others. And so I'd love you to just notice when do you find yourself being a killjoy for the loved ones around you and why? So I know for myself uh, that when I get overwhelmed, and it looks like there's too much to do and that nobody else is being helpful, that I can get myself into some crazy thinking that has me being the killjoy in the family and quite capable of ha having an adult temper tantrum <laughs> at times. Just because we have this understanding doesn't mean we become perfect. We just become better at coming back on track again. And rather than dwelling in that space, you know, for so long. So I want you to know there's always hope and that's what we share in these sessions. Alhamdulillah. So the but how, you know, comes really, the clue comes in this verse. Verily Allah will not change the condition of a people until they condition what is in, change what is in themselves. And I hope by the end of this session, this will make sense to you because the truth is that whatever the thinking is that we have going on that is leading us to be in that kind of doom and gloom state a bit like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh I don't know whether you know Winnie the Pooh but my dad I have fond memories of my dad reading us Winnie the Pooh when we were little and doing all the different voices of the different characters. And Eeyore was always deep and slow and miserable and nothing was ever any good. It looks like rain, Eeyore, you would say. It always looks like rain. Of course it's going to rain. And that was kind of Eeyore. And... Eeyore was kind of the killjoy of Robin, Robin's toys because uh, the story of Benny the Pooh is about all the, the toys that, all the adventures of Robin and his toys. Alhamdulillah. So when we are stuck in as Eeyore, how do we find our way, you know, to be 
Winnie the Pooh, who's always curious and hopeful, or Tigger, who's always excited and bouncy. You know, how do we find our way back to being a kind-hearted, compassionate, loving person to the people around us? Well, let's see. Let's unpack this. So the thinking, the Eeyore thinking is, why me? Or here we go again, or it always happens to me kind of a pity party really um we you know we kind of imagine we're getting out the pity tea and having a pity tea party with our fancy pity teacups <clears throat> and we actually become quite horrible to be around and it's a lot easier to see when we have someone else behaving like that and we don't want to be around them. Sometimes it's hard for us to see in our own selves when we're being like that. But we become horrible to be around and then people don't want to be around us so they tend to avoid us. And so then our pity party continues. Oh, you see, nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. Oh, this is another little ditty that my my dad taught me. A lot of, lot of anecdotes from my dad in this this session alhamdulillah actually interestingly it's um around now is the two-year anniversary of his passing subhanallah maybe that's why he's on my mind and coming up in this session alhamdulillah um but he used to see see there this ditty nobody loves me everybody hates me think i'll go and eat worms fat ones short ones long ones skinny ones worms that squiggle and squirm bite their heads or suck their blood out, throw their skins away. Nobody knows how well I live on worms three times a day. Now, I have no idea what the purpose of singing that was to us, but it did amuse us when we were kids. But it is kind of the <laughs> situation we get ourselves into in our own head. And we really are creating it in our own head. And that's what's really important for us to understand. Because when we shift the way we are thinking about it, then our experience shifts. And it really is that simple. Whatever it is that's going on, whatever it is that we're feeling miserable about, thinking about it differently is all that needs to happen. It doesn't need to change. And interestingly, you know, when when it says, you know, um, you know, um, Allah will change the condition of people when they change the condition within themselves, or I think it's actually in the negative, but words to that effect. The actual external conditions don't need to change for the internal condition to change from one of feeling miserable to one of feeling joyful. Because when we think about Allah and when we truly are in connection with Allah, we can't help but feel good feel joyful that is where all the answers actually lie and so it's the shift of thinking to husnul dhan billah uh, thinking about allah how how allah is there for us how allah never burdens us with more than we can bear alhamdulillah and it really is that simple Maybe not simple to achieve it in the moment, but the solution is that simple. And it becomes easier and easier the more you understand this. And this is why, you know, we're so passionate about the programs that we have at Back to the Fitra, like, you know, Peaceful Hearts and Peaceful Parenting and our certification program and everything, because we're teaching people how to live this. What I'm sharing with you here is sharing with you the hope and the possibility and I can help you go beyond that. You know, if you continue you know, hanging in there and joining our sessions and potentially joining our other programs to getting to the point that this becomes second nature to you, that doesn't mean you won't have moments where you become a killjoy. I remember in this last week, I had a moment. I can't remember exactly what it was about, but it was just a moment because then I saw what I was doing thought I was a bit funny and um, realizing in how silly I was being. And then Alhamdulillah, my thinking went back to Allah and I felt okay again. And it really is how it works, subhanAllah. 
Because you see, anything is possible for Allah. He can say be and it is. And so when when we've got stuck in that woe is me thinking and becoming that killjoy for everybody around us, we've really lost sight of Allah. We've let go of the fact that anything is possible for Allah, that at any moment things can turn around. And we've lost sight of the fact that, well, if it isn't happening our way, well, there's a good reason for that. And it might be because this is our test, or it might be because there's a lesson we need to learn and we haven't learned it yet. And when we learn it, then it will shift. Who knows? Only Allah knows. But it's us trusting in that and appreciating that and realizing that that helps us come out of that negative thinking about our circumstances to rising above it and going, Alhamdulillah. Because remember, everything is good for a believer. You know, when when something bad happens, we are patient and we say, Alhamdulillah. When something good happens, we're grateful and we say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Look at the um, prof Prophet Ayyub, alayhi salam, and how shaitan tried so hard to get him to be discontent with Allah and took everything away from him. Every single thing, his health, his wealth, his family, everything. And still the Prophet Ayyub salam, said, Alhamdulillah. And of course, Allah then rectified his affairs for him as a reward for his patience to teach shaitan a lesson that the true belie believers cannot be swayed by him. And that is the test of this dunya. Are we going to be like the Prophet Ayyub salam, and say Al Alhamdulillah? Or are we going to be like Eeyore in Winnie the Pooh and walk around with our tail hanging low and our mood hanging low and everybody running away from us? It's our choice, actually. So I'm going to share with you a little, uh, actually a couple of clips where um, it's an interview I did with Daniela where we were talking about from killjoy to kind hearted, because that's kind of the shift, isn't it? When, when, when we're in that woe is me state, we're a killjoy for everyone around us. But when we come out of it, we become kind hearted and compassionate and loving towards everyone around us. So this is just a couple of little clips from it. And at the end, I will share with you how you can watch the whole video if you want to see more. Inshallah. So, so now that we've unpacked that word killjoy, it makes um, it sounds pretty rough. But what we're saying is that not somebody is a killjoy, but in the moment they're killing the joy, yeah, in the home, or you know, in any other environment too. You know, whether it's a work environment, whether it's a social group, you know, when we come in with our mood, and I think the issues firstly is we come in with our mood a second coming in with an expectation that somebody else has to fix it for us like that's mm. their responsibility to cheer us up mm. and then find them running from us rather than cheering us up and and then getting ourselves caught even deeper into it um it's very problematic because we're actually creating our own suffering going down that path and that's a key point at the end is we are creating our own suffering, subhanAllah, in, in going down that path. That's why it's really important to understand our way out. So this is Daniela sharing now a little bit about her experience of the shift in thinking. Well, that's right, it is. Um, you know, like I said at the start, when I, I didn't have to do anything to change that. It was just simply my thinking that, you know, fell away mm. and it really was effortlessly and I actually didn't even see it at the start sorry to cut you off I didn't yeah. actually see it at the start but what I noticed was it was a, a little bit of time I oh yeah we're not even having that any of these other issues that we were having mm. and mm. that was like oh wow how come I didn't see it I mean I noticed it but I didn't notice it if that makes any sense because we get so focused on when things are going wrong that we don't notice when things are going right. And that can be part of the thinking as well. <laughs> so what Daniela was saying is that um, it was so effortlessly, the, effortless the, think, the shift in thinking that she didn't even notice that it had gone 
away and that and that can be you know problematic as well because we get so focused on what's wrong that we forget to notice what's right subhanallah anyway you can watch the whole discussion uh i'll show share with you how towards the end inshallah so i always love sharing these couple of verses i feel like it's the answer to everything that you know just these two verses are a cure if we take them to heart because Allah says, and whoever is mindful of Allah, he will make a way out for them and provide for them from sources they could never imagine. And whoever puts their trust in Allah, then he alone is sufficient for them. Certainly Allah achieves his will. Allah has already set a destiny for everything. So how do we take comfort in that? Well, it's a recipe because it's just saying, be mindful of Allah. Step one. Then Allah does the rest apart from the fact that we put our trust in him. So we'd be mindful of Allah. We could do a whole class on what does that mean. We won't do that right now, but let's just accept that, you know, we're being mindful of Allah. Allah's going to find a way out for us from whatever it is. And he's going to provide for us from sources we couldn't imagine. So that means that just because we can't see the answer right now doesn't mean there isn't one. And so that's where the trust comes in, because then when we come into that state of trusting that, okay, Allah can, Allah can find the, me the way out. Allah will provide the way out for me. Just because I can't see it doesn't mean that's not true. That's the trust. And so then Allah becomes sufficient for us. And that's the true, you know, meaning of submission to Allah is that really understanding that Allah is sufficient for us and then the, the rest of it how is it a comfort that everything happens according to Allah's will and that he's already written the plan for us is because he also said he's never going to burden us with more than we can bear and that then the remembrance of Allah do our hearts find rest what are we really looking for in this life a sense of peace isn't it and that's where the peace comes from it comes from Tawakkul, it comes from really truly understanding these few words and and the other words that I added with it, like that that in the remembrance of Allah the hearts find rest, that He will never burden us with more than we can bear. There's so much in the Quran to give us solace. And yeah, we're missing out on it if we're not reflecting on it or connecting with it every day, inshallah. So it starts with us. When we change within ourselves and thinking highly of Allah, so switching to husnul, husnul dhan billah, Allah facilitates the best for us. Now, he also does say that sometimes we may like a thing that's not good for us or dislike a thing that is good for us. So what's best for us may not be exactly what we want or like. Right? However, it will be what is best for us because it's through some of the most uncomfortable moments, by the way, that we have our greatest lessons and our greatest growths and become our best versions of ourselves, subhanAllah. And again, that's trusting that everything has its purpose, its place, and Allah knows exactly what he's doing and, and trusting that. But it starts with us coming back to this faith in Allah, the sense of tawakkul. That's how we get out of being in that killjoy state into a kind-hearted state, subhanAllah. And many of um, the people who have gone through our programs have you know, commented along these lines. Janine said, I used to believe a lot of my thinking and I always feel like I couldn't do enough. Alhamdulillah, when I saw through that illusion, I became more present and hopeful and had a deeper sense of consciousness of Allah and hope in myself and those around me. That's the answer is hope, isn't it? That feeling of hopefulness. I used to feel that I was just existing, just surviving, but Alhamdulillah, I started to feel alive again, sense of joy and motivated to follow my dreams. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And, and Ines, you know, was suffering terribly from chronic fatigue. And now, Alhamdulillah, she is um, looking so well and so much more energetic. Alhamdulillah. 
So my final thoughts is that being a killjoy is no fun for anyone, especially you, especially ourselves. And a shift in thinking can turn it all around is what I meant to write. Please forgive me. I'm, my brain is a bit foggy today because I'm not 100% well, as you can probably hear. So there we go. Typo in there. A shift in thinking can turn it all around. The answer always lies in Husnul Zanbillah. And so I want to invite you to keep joining us on learning more as you can, so you can be a kind hearted rather than a kill joy to those around you, inshallah. And I promised I'd share with you the details, how to watch the next step. So watching the next step, which is kill joy to kind hearted, the discussion between Daniela and I, the link is with this video. If you want to, learn more if you really feel stuck and you want to have a session with me book in a we are like okay coaching session and you can start your journey to a more hopeful life and um the link in the is in the description with this video that i'll share with you inshallah thank you for joining me for another empowering we are all okay wednesday i hope you found today's discussion uplifting and insightful Remember, your well-being matters and you are never alone on this journey. For more resources and support, visit weareallok.com spelt W-E-R-A-L-L-O-K.com Until next time, may the peace, love and blessings of Allah be with you. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and come on video and... If you've got any questions or takeaways you want to share with me, oh, I usually put the We Are All Okay background on for We Are All Okay Wednesday. Let me do that. There we go. See, we have to have the background to match the session. <laughs> mm. Anyone got any um, questions or takeaways from that? Let me check the chat. So I have here feeling overwhelmed, overtired, overthinking that no one else is helping, like they're, that you're being taken for granted. Now, the may it may well be quite true that, that that is the situation, right? However, thinking about it that way leads us to that defeated kind of experience. And so... If we can switch, you know, our thinking around and we don't have to experience it that way, what's interesting is how we're able to take charge of things and set limits and insist upon people participating and doing, you know, their share of the load. But when we're in our own pity party, people are just running from us and so they're not being helpful at all. Um, so we actually create our own rod. Uh, do you know, I think it's the, we create a rod for our own back. I think that's what my Nana used to say, something like that. When we think that way, even though the, it may be true, it's the dwelling in it that creates the suffering experience of it rather than giving us the take charge attitude to take charge and, and make things happen. Yes, exactly. Let go of the pity party, being mindful in the moment and letting all the other thoughts fall away. Let go of the past and future thinking and focus on and enjoy the current moment. Yeah. I also need to try and fake it until I make it stop and smile in the moment and inshallah, the positive thoughts will flow. Sure. But if that feels really hard, don't force yourself because we can get ourselves into this internal battle where we think we should be able to be happier and that there's something wrong with us because we're not being happy, happier. And so we're trying to force ourselves to be. And what tends to happen is we're actually exacerbating the whole situation doing that. Sometimes just submitting to, okay, so feeling crap right now and just let it pass because it never stays forever. 
Like we, we never have a mood that stays forever. In fact, if we reflect on it, we have so many different moods in a day. Even if we have a pretty depressing day, there will be moments in the day where we've had other feelings. We haven't stayed in the same feeling, the same mood the entire day. That's really hard to achieve. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I think it's true. They do say that if we smile, that it does have a physiological response in our body, that the actual motion of smiling does make a difference. Um, but of course, whether or not that makes a difference when you're forcing yourself to smile, I don't know whether they've done research on that. <laughs> but it's always worth a try, isn't it? Anyone got any questions? If not, I'd love to hear people's takeaways. Assalamu alaikum, dear sister. Welcome, salam wa Good to hear your voice, sis. Thank you. And it's so good to hear your voice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with complete shifa. I mean, I mean, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for uh, another wonderful session. Fantastic reminders. It was a nice boost uh, for the day. Alhamdulillah. Um, uh, in, indeed, um, uh, the ayahs from the Quran with our hardship comes ease. Um, as we um, uh, as, as we uh, reflect on the ayahs and as we are reminded uh, by such great um, uh, role models like yourself, it really sinks in. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so Jazakallah khair and thank you so much. Wayak, sis. Jazakallah khair for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Wayak. Anyone else want to share what they took away from the session? You seem unmuted, Roni. Is that because you wanted... Oh, assalamu alaikum. Sorry. I'm I just put a piece of apple in my mouth. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to get the <laughs> um, Yeah, like, you know, we often forget to think about a lot. How many times a day are we supposed to be thinking about our lap? So this gives us, every time we are down, the first thing we should think is, uh, okay, I'll take my, I, I'm take i taking a step out to think about our lap. And mm -hmm. that, you know, and on the false smile, I got a big one on that one. When I was working in the bank, there were some girls that can't smile. Girls, mm -hmm. girls were trained. There were special training in our training session. They were trained how to smile, I got. I couldn't believe it. At that time, <laughs> because I've got a new natural big yay mouth that opens up at a mile, <laughs> I didn't, uh, and I, I just naturally did it, but I didn't know that it was written in Islam. At that time, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Later, I found out, and I thought, wow, and there are some that their lips just won't open. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe as soon as we think about, you know, as soon as we, we feel gloomy, we think about, I'm going to smile to Allah, or I'm going to smile to the Rasulullah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Beautiful suggestion, alhamdulillah. And yeah, it's really sad that there are the people out there that are like permanent eors, like that they just can't smile. And I do wonder now, I've been a Muslim so long now that it's really hard to remember what it was like not being a Muslim. And I often wonder how people who don't have Allah how they do find happiness and joy and peace properly in this life, because I can't imagine it without Allah. You know, subhanAllah. I know by killing the joy of others. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, there are some people who enjoy being a killjoy, um, but it's not really part of our deen to do that. So alhamdulillah, we're not hopefully of that nature. Alhamdulillah. Well, Jazakallah, everyone, for being here today. It's been um, lovely sharing with you. You know, it's so interesting. I was actually feeling quite unwell before the session. But sharing with you and being with you, it's uplifting even for me. Like I gain from it as much, maybe even more, you know, just by showing up and being here with you, alhamdulillah. So Jazakallah for being here with me and um, being a part of my healing as well, alhamdulillah, because it's all interconnected, 
spiritual, emotional, and physical. Alhamdulillah. See you next week, inshallah. What have we got? J-K-L-L-L. Not sure what we've got for L, so you'll just have to wait and see. Um, but we will be doing the letter L next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.